Goodness, she loves that milk. Isn't she beautiful? You know, the lambs, as you probably heard her say, ah, ah. And you know, when they're big, they call them sheep. They're lamb when they're little like this. And they're so beautiful, they're so sweet. When we speak of someone being gentle and sweet and kind, we say just as gentle as a lamb. Baby lamb. Oh, what a lovely little animal. Look at our little friend. I think Murray outdid himself this time. A baby lamb. Do you know how long we've been trying to get a baby lamb to visit with us? He is such a beautiful lamb. And how old is our little lamb? Just three weeks old. Do you know how young? Oh, hello, sweetheart. Look at her looking up at me. Three weeks old. Can you imagine three weeks old and she can walk? Could you walk when you were three weeks old? I couldn't. See, animals are quite different from people in that. Well, one thing they like is milk. Let's see if I can give her a little milk if she'll stay around. Would you like some milk, sweetie? Oh, my goodness. I said the right thing. Oh, oh, look at that. Oh, my goodness. She loves that milk. Isn't she beautiful? You know, the lambs, as you probably heard her say, ah, ah. And you know, when they're big, they call them sheep. They're lamb when they're little like this. And they're so beautiful, they're so sweet. When we speak of someone being gentle and sweet and kind, we say just as gentle as a lamb. And of course, the boy lamb, we call a ram. And they love milk, as you can see. And you know what we get from lambs? We get wonderful fur. Oh, you're not gonna leave me, are you, sweetie? Oh, she's so lovely. She's very smart. We get fur, to keep us nice and warm. The wool comes from the lamb that your sweater's made of, or maybe your hat or your scarf. Oh, she's so lovely. Three weeks old, can you imagine? And you know something? You can pet this animal, and you can see other lovely animals just like this at the animal nursery on Surf Avenue in Brooklyn. And you just tell them the joy you said to take good care of you, just the way they take good care of this beautiful little lamb. Oh, she's lovely. You know, she lives on a farm, of course, and uh, in, it's springtime, and we think about all of the lovely things that go along with spring, like little baby lambs. And she's just about finished her milk, hasn't she? <laughs> oh, she's lovely. Well, now, I think you've had a good time of it. <laughs> All right? Empty bottle. <laughs> oh, she's lovely. She is just lovely. You know, boys and girls, it's so wonderful to see an animal like that and to think about all of the wonderful things that you can get from an animal like that, like the fur or the uh, wool that we get from the, uh, the lamb. Of course, it doesn't hurt, you know, when we take the wool off. We just shave it just as you cut your hair. Now, we get things from, oh, many, many different animals, very important things. And I thought maybe you could help me sort of figure out what important things we get from these different animals. For instance, there's an animal that we all know and love, the cow. And what do we get from the cow that's really good for us? Something we all love. You thinking? I heard Alex say it. Right, milk. Very important product. Very, very helpful and useful animal, isn't it? Now I'm thinking of another animal that we get something very important from, something that we need very much, an animal we need. Well, we use this animal, of course, to carry things for us. And you know something else I like? I even like to ride this animal. Do you know the animal I'm speaking of? <laughs> of course, it's a donkey. And you're going to hear, be hearing more about the donkey in our show. Now, let me see. I'm thinking of another product that, well, you may have had it this morning for breakfast, even. I love it. When Mommy makes a cake, she uses it, too. And a very special animal gives us this product. They're eggs that I'm talking about. And which animal do we get the eggs from? You said it. It's a chicken. Right, we get eggs from chickens. But you know something? If you said duck, you were right too, because we can get eggs from ducks. We certainly can. In fact, I brought some duck eggs with me. These are real live duck eggs. I even have the dirt from the ground. You know, they bury them in the ground, and we have to sort of find them. 
But the duck gives eggs, and they're very delicious, too. They're kind of rare. That's why you don't hear about duck eggs so often. But they're good to eat. And you know something else the duck does? The duck gives us feathers. Maybe right in the pillow that you're sleeping on. You may have duck feathers in them to make it nice and soft so you can go to sleep very quickly. Oh, yes. These animals give us very important products. They really do. Oh, Mr. Mixup. Oh, thank you, Mr. Mixup. Wow, he certainly gets away from here fast, doesn't he? He really does. Let me see what he brought us today. Well, now let's see. What on earth? Hey, that person looks. That's Seymour. Is that Seymour? What on earth is this? It is Seymour. Let's see what the note says. Here's a picture. Please don't laugh. Seymour's taking his yearly bath. Put these pictures in their proper place. Well, how do you like that? Seymour taking his yearly bath. Oh, boy, oh, boy. Well, here's a picture of him in the tub. And here he is undressed with the clothing. There's a towel around him. And there he's all dressed. Now, let's see. I put it in the proper order. Well... Now, let me see. He's got to first do something. He's got to take off his clothes. So let's put this picture first. There's Seymour taking off his clothes, getting undressed. Now, he wouldn't dry himself first before he got in the tub, would he? So I guess the next picture would be of Seymour getting in the tub. Oh, what a nice sudsy tub that is. He looks comfortable. And now, before he could put his clothes on, of course, he'd have to do something very important, and that is dry himself. So there we go. He's got the towel around him, and he's all dry. And now, of course, we see a picture of Seymour all dressed, and he's ready to go. How do you like that? That's pretty good. All dressed and ready to go. <laughs> That's the proper sequence. First, get undressed in the tub, the towel, and ready to go. That's pretty good. Oh, you know something? I wonder. Just sing in the tub. Oh, Seymour. I wonder. Oh, hi, George. What are you doing, Seymour? I was uh, trying to take a little bath. You're trying to take a little bath. Oh, that's nice. But I hope the boys and girls will not do as you do and take a bath once a year. They'll remember to take a bath every day. Well, it is springtime, and, uh, you know, I thought it would be a good time to get myself all cleaned up, too. Yeah, but I, spring, I thought that meant the yard and, uh, you know, and uh, cleaning the house and the car and things like that. And me, too. And you, too. Well, I guess that's a good point. You know, it's important to see that you're nice and clean, too. Yeah, I, oh, gee whiz, I, wait, I'm going to get my, uh, I'm going to get my brush, because I need you to help me. Yeah, uh, get a brush and some soap, Seymour. We need right. a towel, and we need a brush. Would you get it for me? Right, I'll be yeah, okay. right back. A towel and a soap, and we need to remember that taking a bath can be an awful lot of fun, you know, boys and girls? In fact, he was singing, singing in the tub. That's where I love to sing most of the tub, is you rub and scrub, and it makes you feel so very good. Oh, yeah, there well, we go. You, uh, could you help me? You know, it's kind of hard for me to wash behind my oh, ears. Oh, I certainly will. I don't have any hands. Yes, let me rub your oh, back. Oh, that so you... good. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh. Rub-a-dub-a-dub-a-dub. Look at Seymour in the tub. Rub-a-dub-a-dub-a-dub. See him wash, see him scrub. Now wipe your eyes and wash your face. And don't forget between your toes. Just wash yourself as best you can. But never, never, never stand. Cause you might fall and hurt real bad. And that would make me very sad. So keep clean, be careful too. Bathing is so good for you and bathing is very very good for you boys and girls it's important to remember that bathing can be fun an awful lot of fun so all i can tell you is that remember that you shouldn't stand in the tub because if you stand in the tub you may slip and fall oh that's nice boys and girls you know i think that what we could do at this moment that would be a lot of fun also would to be to do a little finger play you know i know some finger play about 10 little firemen you like firemen well we're going to do this about 10 little firemen here they are and they're all sleeping in a row ding dong ding dong 
goes the bell. Are you ringing the bell with me? Now down the pole they go. Slide down the pole. Oh, there go the firemen down the pole. Now see if you can do this one. Off on the engine. Oh, oh, oh. Now they're using the big hose. So, so, so. You're putting the fire out? Oh, I see a little fire over there. You're getting it out? Good. Put the fire out. So, so, so. Now, back on the fire truck. Oh, so slow. And back to bed. They go, go, go. <laughs> That was nice. Did you do your finger play with me? Did you move your hands and count to ten? That was awfully nice. You know, I noticed that Mr. Beebe is making some letters over there. I wonder if he's making letters for Seymour Snack Time. Let's go see. Hi, kids. You know, I was thinking about what uh, Seymour likes to eat letters, and I thought, I like to work with letters, too, but I don't like to eat them. I, uh, I would like to draw them and write them out. But you know, you can make different things from letters. Now, here's the letter A, and I think we could probably make a nice little picture from that. And see if you can guess what I'm making while I do this. I'll put a head on here like this, and a smiling face. There we are, and some hair. Have you guessed what it is yet? Of course, you'll have to have some arms. There we are. I made a little girl. I'll give her some sleeves. I forgot her nose. There we are. Now maybe we could try another letter. Let's see if we use the letter W. What do you suppose we could make out of that? That's a kind of tough one. Let's see what we can make. Ah, uh, we can make a little Indian village. The professor gave me some music to make me know what I could do with this. There we are. And those are little Indian houses. Do you know what Indian houses are called? They're teepees. Let's see, teepee. That might, that might do something in itself. Let's see, a tee. Let's see what we can make out of that. Oh, I think I can see a face. There we are. He looks kind of grumpy. I guess he didn't have a bath yet today. And now, oh, you know, you do the same thing with numbers. If I make a six, I wonder what we could make out of that. Let's see. I'll make a six, and we'll try to make something out of that by doing just like this. You know what that thing is? If you said a duck, you're right, because we've made a nice little duck out of that. You like ducks, Joya? That's Mr. Beebe. And you know what it makes me think about? I know a song about six little ducks. You know that? Six little ducks that I once knew. Fat ones, skinny ones, they were two. But the one little duck with the feather on his back, he rolled the others with his quack, quack, quack. He rolled the others with his quack, quack, quack. Quack, quack, quack. Are you quacking with me? Quack with me here. Home from the water they would come Wibble wobble, wibble wobble, ho ho hum But the one little duck with the feather on his back He ruled the others with his quack 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 He ruled the others with his quack 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 One more time to quack, so pay attention boys and girls Are you gonna quack with me? I heard somebody say no about a lot of animals today and the story that I'm going to tell you is about the donkey ride. It seems that once upon a time there was a wonderfully friendly warm farmer and he had a son and they were going to take their donkey to the farm to the uh, market rather 
because they had a lot of produce to sell. They had chickens and they had eggs and they had all kinds of vegetables. And this is what they did once a year after they'd grown all their produce so that they could make their money to live. So he was packing the donkey with all of the baskets of things off to the market to sell his produce. Well, after they'd gotten everything packed and they were on their way, they met a lady that said, my goodness, why on earth should you be letting that little boy walk, the poor little kid? Put him on the donkey. What do you think the donkey's for? My goodness. Also, the man trying to please her, he picked up his little boy and he put the little boy on the back of the donkey so that he too could ride. Now the little boy was riding on the donkey. And of course, he felt very good because he'd pleased the lady and he thought maybe that was the thing to do. But as he walked a little further, he saw an old man sitting there and the old man said, my goodness, what is this world coming to? You riding while your poor old father walks. This is ridiculous. You should be walking and your father should be riding. Get that kid off of there right away. Well, the father felt very bad and he said, gee whiz, maybe I should be riding. I am the older of the two. My son is young, so he took his son down and he got on top of the donkey. Now the donkey was loaded with the baskets and there was the farmer on top of the donkey and the little boy was now leaving the donkey to the market. Well, as they rode a little further, they met a man on horseback. And the man said, how silly on a hot day like this that anyone should walk when you have a donkey. Why don't the two of you get on the donkey? It would make a lot more sense. The man thought, well, gee, I, I guess I could do that. I could put my son on with me and all right thank you sir and he picked up his son and put him in front of him and the two of them rode on the donkey with the baskets of food and off to the market he went well he was going along and it was quite a hot day and he saw two young people standing there looking at him in disgust and they said isn't it terrible i should get my sign it's cruel to the animals it's exactly what it is how dare they pack that donkey down, load him so, and they are bigger than the donkey. They could even carry the donkey. That's ridiculous. That poor donkey's gonna have a curve or a horseshoe in his back. Shame on you, shame, 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 both of you. Oh, the man felt so bad, the farmer got off, and he, he said, I I'll just have to carry the donkey. So he got a pole, he took all the things off the donkey, he put the chickens around his son's neck, and he carried the baskets, and he took a string, and he tied the donkey to the pole, and he said, we'll carry him. That's what we'll do, we'll carry him to market. <laughs> well, you know what happened? As he was walking the market, they had to cross the bridge that was just before they got to the market. And as he was about to cross the bridge, there were some men working. They saw this sight, and they laughed and laughed and laughed so hard that the donkey began to squirm and to, to push his feet and to wiggle around. He finally wiggled out from the, from the pole and the farmer lost all of the baskets of food into the water and the donkey ran away. And there was all of his produce, all that he'd worked for all year laying in the water. And the poor farmer just sat there and cried with his son and the son said, I'm so sorry, father. What, what why did this happen? He said, well, son, I don't know really why it happened, but I have learned something very important from this experience. What, what's that, Dad? Well, I've learned one thing, son, that you can't please everyone. And that's a very important lesson for us to learn very young. So you do the best you can. You remember, you can't please everyone. <laughs> well, I hope you like the story. Boys and girls, we're going to be right back after this commercial break, so don't you dare leave us. John Brown. Well, it's a wonderful story about John Brown. John Brown had a little baby, and this little baby had a cold on its chest. And you know what they did for the baby? They rubbed his chest with camphorated oil. Do you know what camphorated oil is? I bet you don't, because they don't use that anymore. But years ago, they used to use it. It had a terrible, terrible smell. Well, we're going to do some hand movements with this, and I want you to do it with me, will you? All right, it goes like this. John Brown's baby had a coal upon its chest. John Brown's baby had a coal upon its chest. John Brown's baby had a coal upon its chest. And they rubbed it with the 
camphorated oil. Now follow me. John Brown had a coal upon its chest. John Brown had a coal upon its chest. John Brown had a coal upon its chest, and they rubbed it with the camphorated oil. John Brown had a <coughs> upon its chest. John Brown had a <coughs> upon its chest. John Brown had a <coughs> upon its chest, and they rubbed it with the camphorated oil. Now follow me. John Brown had a <coughs> upon its. John Brown had a <coughs> upon its. John Brown had a <coughs> upon its. And they rubbed it with the camphorated oil. John Brown had a <coughs> upon its. John Brown had a <coughs> upon its. John Brown had a <coughs> upon its. And they rubbed it with the. Do you know why I held my nose? Because the camphorated oil smelled so bad. <laughs> did you do that? Oh, I like that. Boys and girls, now let me see. What did we do today? What did we do? We did many, many things today. We you know we saw a baby lamb from the animal nursery, and I tell you, I've never been so excited. There's nothing like a baby lamb. The most gentle, wonderful animal that there is. Really a loving animal. We could all be as gentle as a lamb. We have a very, very happy world. And, you know, Seymour took a bath, didn't he? Don't forget what I told you. When you're taking a bath, never, never stand up in the tub. Because you might slip and fall and hurt yourself. More accidents occur in the tub. Now, if Mommy's there, she'll stand you up and take you out, but never stand in the tub. Remember that. Did you like our story about the donkey ride? It really teaches us a great lesson. It teaches us a lesson about trying to please everybody. But that doesn't mean that we shouldn't try to do our very best. So we think first, don't we? But we would still try to do our very best. But remember, you can't please everybody, so you have to decide what the right thing is to do. Oh, well, I hope you've enjoyed the day with us, boys and girls, and I hope it'll be a very, very wonderful day. But now we must say goodbye. Goodbye, we've had a great time. Goodbye, now and till next time. Goodbye, sorry to leave you. Now we must say goodbye. And remember, boys and girls, there's nothing I like better than spending my time with you.